our, our challenge, you know, and uh, I've, uh, I've been very fortunate personally to have a, a pretty respectable civic uh, a resume. Uh, one of them was being the, the only Latino. You know, the St. Paul Chamber of Commerce just recently celebrated 150 year uh, anniversary, 150, right? Yeah, so who is the only Latino to ever chair the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce? Well, who? I, yeah, right, right, who? Well, yours truly, Rick Aguilar. No, no, I, listen, it wasn't easy, folks. You know, they didn't want to give it up. You know, we had a boom here, we got a boom there. But we earned it, you know, and, and I, I was able to uh, chair the chamber in the year 2000 when we opened the XL Arena. We had a guy named uh, Coleman as mayor, not Chris Coleman, but the real Coleman, Norm. And he was, <laughs> he was our mayor. And so, you know, we, we need to have more Latinos and others on boards. But we want to make sure that when they join your board, they're going to participate, they're going to be active, and they're going to be there. And that's our challenge. So we, we you know, again, there's, so there's always a little, you know, time period you have to go through to find the right person. But that's what we do with all our board members, right? We, you know, when you have somebody in your board, Minnesota Opera or your Ordway, you know, they have to be engaging, they have to be ready to do the work. Now, here's our next topic. It, it leads me into our next topic. 22 years ago, Minneapolis has always had a booming advertising and marketing industry here. They're the greatest, but none of them were doing multicultural. None of the agencies at all. Uh, so as we were growing our business 22 years ago, and after that, getting hundreds of people to our conferences, we weren't getting the ad agencies. Now, I thought they were intimidated with the language. Uh, a lot of times, reaching Latinos, you have to do it in Spanish. Now we have the Asian challenge. If you want to reach Asians, especially out in California, you know, you've got you to go in language. And so, um, to answer that challenge, a, the group of corporations uh, formed the Brand Lab. Now, who's, who who's here has heard of the Brand Lab? Anyone? Well, good, good, because I, I uh, uh, Susanna O oh is going to come. Susanna O oh is going to come and, and, and tell us about that. But I think that is the type of organization we need. So we're engaging more uh, multicultural uh, students and professionals that can fill those roles at these agencies and at your corporations and at your organizations. And so, with that, I'm going to just a brief. Um, about Suzanne O. Uh, so she's a fearless director at the Brand Lab. It's an organization dedicated to creating a bias free and inclusive marketing industry that thrives on the insights and creativity of people with diverse ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds. Before the Brand Lab, Suzanne moved from Wisconsin to Minnesota to pursue, pursue a bachelor's degree at McAllister College. And she's been in the Twin Cities since. Suzanne has worked at several education nonprofits and recently graduated from the Humphrey School of Public Affairs with a master's in public policy. How about a big hand for Suzanne O? Thank you, Rick, and thanks everyone for having me here. Oh, perfect. Um, Nice intro, and I'm so excited to follow up with Amalia. So my name is Suzanne. Um, I am fearless director at the Brand Lab, and that is yes, my actual title. Um, <laughs> I am just a program director. People get confused with the ED, um, but that's me. So today I'm just going to talk about the Brand Lab, who we are, what we're doing, um, highlight some of our students, and then talk about our future, and hopefully get some of you involved. So the vision of the Brand Lab is um, an industry that thrives with the insights of creative uh, people from diverse backgrounds. So we specifically focus on ethnic and socioeconomic status. Um, and we do this by introducing, guiding, and preparing students for a career in the marketing industry. So what does that look like? Um, we'll watch a really quick video. Do we have Wi-Fi here? Um, I think so. Okay. Well, you might watch a really quick video, <laughs> yeah. and then if not, it's cool. Let's keep talking. Is it inside a PowerPoint? Um, you know, 
I think the link is on there. So okay. Yes. There we go. You know, the audio is not going out. Uh, yeah, I, this guy's usually like, so you can see a video. Can't see it up there? Oh. Yeah, there we go. The audio's only here, though. The audio's only there, though? Yeah. Oh. Let's just skip this video, then. I can hear you. Oh, you're smart. Oh, my gosh. You guys are so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Rico. That's why he's the man. Yeah, do you have all my job? Whoa, there. Rico. The Brain Lab starts in the high school classroom, introducing students from diverse backgrounds to the world of marketing. We develop sought-after skills like creativity, problem-solving, collaboration, innovation, critical thinking, communication, and of course, networking. <coughs> we offer scholarships that help students pay for college and provide internships that put students in the workplace. But let's face it, in today's marketplace, it's not just about what you know. It's also about who you know. And that's why the Brand Lab hosts intimate networking events that put students together with industry leaders. Ultimately, the Brand Lab is about opening doors and creating opportunities for both talented students and businesses alike. about finding someone a job. It's about giving them a path to a creative career. In other words, the Brand Lab makes a kid's world bigger. And when kids' worlds get bigger, our lives get better. Thanks for uh, dealing with our IT stuff, but that's the Brand Lab in a nutshell. Um, and I can go through some of the programs in a little bit more detail. If I can find my mouse there. All right, so our whole thing isn't about saving students, it's about connecting young talent to these opportunities that they haven't had previously. And so we do this through our four pillars, exposure, access, opportunity, and equity. And we have four programs that align with all of these. So we can walk through them together. So the classroom program is really where it all starts. We work with high school students, juniors and seniors. We go into classrooms and we um, talk about some curriculum on what is marketing and advertising. What does a career in this look like? You're super creative, what does that mean? And how do you use your talents? in this industry. Um, this is really the core and the start of the Brand Lab. John Olson was the person who started um, the Brand Lab um, of Olson, the marketing agency in town. Um, he one day kind of looked around his agency and saw that everyone looked like him, a white dude, like a middle-aged white dude. And so he was like, okay, this is kind of weird. Like we should go find some more talent. He kind of essentially marched into a high school and said he wants to teach a class on advertising and marketing. And they said yes, and so he got these students in, he provided them internships through Olson, and that's where it kind of all bloomed from. And so now we are a nonprofit today, and we still do this all the time with students all around the metro area. The second part is internships. So when students say they're interested and they see our curriculum, they can apply for our internships. That means they get an eight-week paid internship at one of our agency partners. Um, and with that, they provi we provide them with curriculum and guidance and also a summer mentor. After that, we don't just say like, bye, good luck, <laughs> have fun in college, we'll see you at the end of it, right? We know that there are a lot of barriers to get into college and through college, and so we provide them with even more um, support through our Connect program. 
So with the Connect program, um, alumni have the opportunity to do more challenging internships around the Twin Cities and also receive mentorships and a lot of guidance throughout that as well. And lastly, my personal favorite is Fearless. Um, Fearless, I like to call the adult brand lab. We go into agencies and we do workshops. We have an annual event called Fearless Conversations, happening April 24th, everyone. Um, and we also do podcasts with our students as well. So all of this work is really to uh, acknowledge that it's not about the students changing this industry. We need to also work with them to make sure this is a place they want to stay. Any questions so far on what we do? Awesome. So just to give you a glimpse of Fearless and the stuff we do, I thought we could just do our um, icebreaker activity that we do at every workshop. <laughs> so has anyone ever seen this waterline of visibility before? Yeah? Okay, so for those who haven't, the waterline of visibility is kind of um, a framework to figure out what are surface level culture things about us and what are deep surface, I mean deep culture <coughs> that we have. So like you are essentially this iceberg, yes? And so I'm gonna just pass around some handouts so everyone can have them, hopefully I have them on. Do you mind just passing them down here? Oh, let me grab two for here. Oh, thanks, they're just here. So I what guys some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so just to get us started, I can model for us first, and then I want everyone to take like a minute, um, just to do some self-reflection, and then I'll ask you to turn to someone near you, maybe two or three people, and just talk through those surface level and deep culture level um, identities. So for me, um, race is something you can visibly see on me. I am Asian. Uh, Age, I am one of those millennials that Amalia talked about. <laughs> I'm 27. Um, and then wealth is something that you might be able to see just the way I dress, right? So surface culture is kind of what you see at a glance. So I kind of look, hopefully I look like, I, I don't know what I look like, but I'm from a working class family, but have moved into a middle class kind of area. And so that transition has been really um, uncomfortable and interesting and sometimes fun for me as well. Um, and then below the waterline, political beliefs, I am left-leaning. Um, education, Rick said I have a master's degree, um, and I'm the first in my family to get that, so that's my, something you might not know about me. I'm first gen for college and graduate school. And um, let's see, some of these are pretty broad. So like thought process, for example, I like to process in my head a lot before I share out, um, and so that's something that might look people like I'm being hesitant or I might not be doing my work, but it's just my work process. Okay, so those are some examples. Um, so I would love if everyone took a minute just to look over their own and think about them. And then I'll just share when it's time to meet with people. Go ahead. Wow. Oh, no. Yeah, Can you bring it back together, y'all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen you in a while. Awesome. Do you mind if I pass the mic to you? Okay, so if everyone can listen up, we have someone who wants to share their waterline. Oh, it's okay. I can just pass around. Thank you. One above, one below. One above, one below. So I believe. Hey, everyone. Hi. Sorry to close up, but one of the workshop agreements that we usually do is accept, uh, accept and expect non-closure so we can keep learning and moving forward. So thank you for your attention. All right. So for me, I'm going to pick um, art and music. I believe uh, that is something that we all can connect to, right? And I believe that music is to be felt and not just heard. So that's there for me. And um, I would say... Life experiences. I'll share the same thing as I shared with those guys. There was a time in my life where I was homeless and I slept on a park bench. And so um, that shaped me in a way to where I know that everything we have is a gift and we should truly share it when we can. Yeah. Whoa. Thank you so much. Can I get a few more examples? Just get us moving and talking. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Do I need to stand? No, you can oh, okay, I'll <laughs> um, So I am Latina, but as far as language, uh, I grew up speaking English uh, in my home. So my physical appearance might um, uh, give people clues that I am that way, but then when they, they speak to me, I get embarrassed because I can't speak back, and, I, and then they're like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then um, 
uh, maybe my uh, value system is different than others, but you can't necessarily see that unless you get to, to know me. Thank you. One more person. Let's like be that. fearless. <laughs> <laughs> like a man. <laughs> 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 One more. I'm getting my steps in as well, so this is good. Don't be intense. Hi. Uh, so I'll just go with age. I'm in my late 30s. And, baby. Um, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, for a long time, I actually kept my age secret because that was some advice that I got from a friend of mine who was a teacher. And when he was first starting as a teacher, he got a lot of pushback from the students when he told them uh, his age. And then in his next classroom, he didn't tell them and he noticed a marked difference um, starting his career. And then under, under the water, um, patterns of emotion. I grew up in a really expressive family so I was raised to be very expressive, and um, I'm, I'm Scottish and Cajun, so we're not a quiet people, <laughs> and a lot of times that comes out in the workplace. So that's an interesting <laughs> dynamic with my coworkers. <laughs> Was it my direction that was confusing? A lot of words. Lots of words. What else? Lots of wow. Like, oh, you know, revelatory moments. Mm -hmm. I Even didn't know that. You yeah. Work with? Yeah. I yeah. think above the water is easier. Yeah. Mm. Why do you say that? Because you, it's more of uh, just visual. Mm. Mm -hmm. But under the water, you have to really uh, converse and, and get to know someone. Yeah, you really have to think about those things some more because they don't come up at day to day, right? Right. Yeah. And happens. I would say it also opens you up to thinking that every individual you interact with is so much more complex. There's yeah. so much more there, and it just gets you thinking that we're all aware of that, but we never think. Totally, yes. So it's all of these things. This is the reason why we always start with this iceberg. Is um, we talked we talk about diversity as being super important, but we don't take the time to reflect on ourselves and see what that looks like for us, right? And so how can we expect to go find diversity when we're not um, looking inside ourselves as well? And it also goes to show that you know we come with a lot of different perspectives, but sometimes we just make quick assumptions about someone just based on their race. So uh, like let's say I'm. Just, I like to think a lot before I put something down. Someone might attribute that to you like, oh, that's her race. Like, it's because she's Asian and she's quiet, right? Instead of like thinking like, oh, maybe that's just her pattern or emotion. Maybe this is just who she is. Yeah. I just wanted to say that, you know, we, we look at the things at the top which are visible where we're different. But I think when you look at the things underneath, that there's a lot of potential for us to have a lot more in common than we think. Yes. 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 That's, true. that's that great. Point. Yes. Thank you. And so, yeah. I, I, hearing some of the stories, some of the background, understanding that below the waterline, I saw it as a waterline of vulnerability too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So understanding that. Yes, definitely. One more comment? Yeah, I think it's important to um, <coughs> acknowledge that maybe the top is something that is visible, but um, people who present a certain way might not necessarily be the way that you're viewing them. Um, so maybe it's not the easiest level, or maybe it's not what you see is what you get. Uh, and perhaps the lower level can bring you to to realize the top. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. So you know, as we're thinking about our work in advertising and marketing, we have to start thinking about what voices are we missing? What voices are actually there, but we're not bringing up? Um, so at the Brand Lab, we do a state of the industry report every other year looking at what the industry looks like. Um, in the last year, we did one and it showed that only 7.75% of the industry is comprised of people of color. So what does that mean when we are not having all those voices at the table, right? So anyway, that is just a little icebreaker that we do, but I'd give you a little taste. Um, so like I said, it started as an innovative idea, just with a few people supporting us, and now we've grown to have a lot of partners. Um, and we're so grateful for all the support. Um, we couldn't do the work we're doing without you. 
In addition, um, we don't talk about our not like our money a lot. Um, we talk about our students, and we will. But since 2009, we've had over 3,600 students come through. Um, we've had over 300 internships, and we also award scholarships. So we've awarded $223,000 in scholarship money to our students. Um, but like I said, it really couldn't happen without the support, so thank you to everyone who's been a part of that. Um, so now, the most important parts are students, right? Um, these are our rising stars, the people who are going to be in this industry um, and make something of it. So um, these are just three people um, that have gone through our program and may be at different stages. What I really want to focus on is Padro. She just really uh, recently went through our internship program, is now in our Connect program. Um, I just want to give you her story through our four pillars and our programs. So Kadra started with us um, in 2014. She's from Hopkins High School. Anyone from Hopkins here? Hey, nice. <laughs> um, so she went to Hopkins and she was interested in our program um, through our curriculum and so she applied and got an internship with us. So her first internship was at Mia. Um, she is now enrolled at St. Kate's. Um, about to graduate in May 2019, coming up, and she's studying business administration, um, and she also has a mentor from Olson. Um, not only is she um, working at Best Buy, she also is already giving back to the Brand Lab by being a part of the work we do. So we have different alumni boards that help um, shape our work that we do. So we're not just doing this like blindly, we have student support throughout. Um, another student that I would love to highlight is Fred. This video, um, well, we'll just watch it and then I'll rave about him. How about that? <laughs> um, while this video is loading up, does anyone have any questions so far? We might not have much time at the end, so I thought I'd just ask right now. Have, have you evaluated how many of your students that have gone through your internships have actually ended up in marketing or like fields? Yes, we have. I do not have those numbers on me, um, but we are just starting to figure out that stuff. Um, as we are a 10-year program, we're finally seeing students actually in the industry. Um, I can give you my card, and I can connect you with our for anyone who's interested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I have a B up there? No. No B. No B. S O H at the brand of our Thank you for dealing with our uh, technical things. Password. Like, brand lab mission statement is really 
become a real for me. Our mission, obviously, to diversify the whole industry as a whole, not only diversify the employees and the culture, but diversify the mindsets of people. When you diversify it and you bring these unique ideas from different backgrounds and cultural perspectives, I think that's going to like change it in the future. I think I really developed a professional attitude and a more like like a different perspective on not only like the agency or understanding how it works, but like the world as a whole. It's been awakening. It's been truly like eye-opening awakening. I've really not only like found myself in the agency, but I think I found myself as a person. phenomenal. He is one of our students that just went through our internship program and this whole video was made of like off script stuff that he just said. So this was originally for another video so like we have another video of him and another student and this is just the like leftover stuff that he wants to like free flow and so even in our students we see the that they understand that there's a need for diversity in this um, industry and so you know our challenge to adults is like what are we doing to make sure that we um, are helping these students as much as we can. What kind of industry are we making, right? So um, last thing, we are growing as Brand Lab, um, and I just want to share where we're going. So originally, we are based from here. We're moving into Kansas City for sure this year. Um, we have just selected a potential ED. We've made an offer. And um, we're also thinking about expanding into Chicago as well. Um, if you're interested in being a part of the Brand Lab, um, these are some things that you can do. You can volunteer in a classroom, you can mentor a student, um, you can supervise an intern at your own workplace, advocate for the brand left to come in to your agency, um, you can participate in a fearless workshop. I would love to see you all again. Um, you can also make a donation, like we said, we're a nonprofit, and um, you can also lend your time and talents in other ways. Uh, we're small, we're six people, so we will meet with you personally if there are some other ways you want to contribute. So with all that being said, Thank you so much for having us today, um, and I hope to see you all around. I actually have to leave after this, I'm sorry, but I'll put some cards right there if anyone's interested. All right? Thank you. Yeah. Questions? Anything? Okay. Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we're going to take a short break. We're coming back uh, with the Asian marketing uh, seminar with um, Wan Yi Ni. So we'll be back here in uh, 15 minutes and uh, we'll continue with the program. Thanks. <laughs>